Oh my god, guess what? Okay, so the Ninja Game Sirento in VR is going to be finally making its way to PlayStation Store on Tuesday, July 9th. And on top of that, it's going to be getting a physical release on August 13th. So, the Ninja Movement Game in VR finally making its way there. It already exists on the Steam Store, the Oculus Store, and Viveport. So, in the event you don't already own it on the in PC VR, you can get it on PlayStation VR on Tuesday. So that's really all about it. If you want, if you guys want to learn more or see the trailer, check out the Steam Store. I'll try to provide a link in the description down below. Okay, today I've got four, four stories for you. The first one is a new connection standard we could we could see launching late next year that could very well give us 4K resolution per eye. I've got some gameplay footage that we can expect coming from Gamescom next month, as well as the creator of Gran Turismo giving his thoughts on the PSVR 2. And finally, Valve releasing their very own modification models. Ain't that a doozy? So this week, the Video Electronic Standards Association released the specifications for DisplayPort 2.0, the next video cable standard. At the moment, the best we're able to get is 1.4 version A. And using this, we're able to effectively triple the amount of bandwidth capable of being transported along this connection. What does this mean in layman's terms? The easiest thing I could describe is using using a metaphor is same same amount of traffic wider streets more lanes same traffic obviously you're gonna be driving down the highway a little bit faster at the moment one of the potential use cases of the standards visa lists two 4k by 4k displays for augmented and virtual reality headsets at 120 frames per second, giving you HDR capability. Ah, it's just glorious. Although the first products using this port are not going to ship by late 2020 simply because of R&D, primary consumer based headsets likely won't ship using this model until mid mid to late 2021 at the earliest what we are currently using made popular by the Rift S and the Valve Index are display port to 1.2 to give us 1280 by 1440 per eye and 1440 by 1600 respectively. At the moment those ones were given to us all the way back in 2010 but it still give us, gives us a higher bandwidth than standard HDMI. So as a result we're able to see a higher connection than standard HDMI cables. However that that standard is going to be pushed further on down the road. And just for a quick comparison, the HP Reverb and the Acer Concept D Oho, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, are going to be using DisplayPort 1.3 to give us re resolution of 2160 by 2160 since 1.2 doesn't really give us the necessary bandwidth in order to do so. Uh, one of, while one of the things this argument suggests is foveated rendering, the very prospect of requiring that is not really necessary for this article. So I am going to skip over that but I will include the full article in the description down below, like always. 2019 is really shaping up to be the year of virtual reality, 
and we can see that from the plethora of new headsets that we have debuting this year, as well as this year being the very first year that we have virtual reality games showcased at E3, as well as this year also being the very first time that we have virtual reality games showcased at Gamescom. Gamescom, of course, will be will be done from the 20th to the 24th in August in Cologne, Germany. The games that the old games that we already know about that were showcased back at E3, we can see gameplay footage and hands-on time for Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets by Fast Travel Games, Akron's Attack of the Squirrels by Resolution Games, Servio's title, The Walking Dead Onslaught, as well as Neat Corporation and Fast Travel Games Budget Cuts 2. Like I said, all of these games had already been given a little bit of screen time back at E3. However, there are a couple games that we can expect to be also debuted at Gamescom, and those include An Adventures in Wonderland by Cortopia Studios and The Wizard's Dark Times Standalone Expansion by Carbon Studios. Like I said, those ones are going to debut at Gamescom, so that is something we can look forward to when it rolls out on the 20th of August. During a recent interview with GT Planet, Gran Turismo series creator Kazunori Yamauchi stated that the next-gen PS5 and its extra power will greatly benefit VR, which itself is very well suited for a driving game. He goes on to say that VR is something that can never have enough power. It requires a ton of it and really depends on the power of the GPU specifically. While the system sellers are going to be the 4K and 60fps gaming as well as the instant loading of the gaming to drive console sales, the side effect of that is going to give a huge horsepower upgrade and definitely fuel a version 2.0 of a PlayStation VR headset. However, he ex goes on to explain, just as I believe, that the PSVR headset is nowhere near the levels of the first gen Oculus Rift or Vive, let alone the Valve Index headset. Now I've got one last story for you tonight, and it is, it is a doozy. Now this one is all about Valve releasing 3D models of their Valve Index headset as well as technical specifications on the sensors in order to invite innovation and modification to, to create a much more ergonomic and customer-centric idea in mind. While they wouldn't be able to sell them without permission from Valve, the entire concept should make everybody's VR experience even better at the end of the day and give this, I, I would give this like six months or so before everybody's ideas are like tapped out and we actually have a like the best possible customer centric and user centered experience we can. Like I said, six months is all we are really going to need as far as this idea is concerned, I think. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.